I'm Kaylee. Today's video, I want you to just get comfy on the couch, get all cozy, um, make a coffee, a tea, a snack, water, and we're just gonna like hang out for a little bit and connect and hope that you get something out of this video. So please be sure to comment any insights you have gained from it or anything you wanna add. If you have any questions, then make sure you comment and give this video a like if you like it as well. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about healing and personal development, growth, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I wanted to make this video for a while because I've done a lot of healing in the last, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. And I mean, I think we're all always continuing to work on ourselves. We all wanna strive to be the best versions of ourselves. We want to keep developing and growing and evolving and ultimately just coming home to our true self, our best self. So that's what I wanna talk about today a little bit in this video. I have kind of six main things that I wanna talk about that really helped guide me in my healing process and that I still implement and use pretty much every single day as much as I can because it has helped me to let go and release a lot of things that weren't serving me anymore and ultimately lead a happier, healthier life. So just a quick backstory. Um, I haven't really talked about this too much on my channel, but I just wanted to share a little bit. Um, majority of my life, I'm 29 now, but majority of my life, I did not like myself. I did not love myself. I didn't like the way I looked. Always kind of putting myself down, comparing myself to other people, judging myself. I, yeah, I was an anxious kid, um, especially getting into like teenage years, early adult years. I felt very lost, I guess you could say, and was very anxious, was very insecure, um, was always kind of looking outside of myself for my worth and my happiness in other people. I always was that kind of person that like needed to be around a lot of people and I would almost kind of like copy other people's stuff because I like had no really good sense of myself, my true self at least. And yeah, I just felt very lost. I got into like partying and stuff. It was pretty challenging for quite a few years. I um, got really, really depressed and really, really anxious and was really battling with my mental health. I was also, you know, drinking alcohol heavy, heavily and regularly. I was smoking marijuana heavily and, mar and regularly as well. Um, smoked cigarettes for many, many years. Just not, deep, deep down, I was like, this isn't who I am. This isn't who I wanna be. Like, how did I get here? And ultimately, long story short, I ended up physically, mentally, spiritually, very unhealthy. And I ended up having thoughts of not wanting to live anymore. I just didn't see the point. I just hated myself that much that yeah, I just wanted to, I was having suicidal ideations, not wanting to be alive anymore. So that was kind of like my rock bottom or well, I've had a couple <laughs> rock bottoms to be honest, but each one of us is different. Some of us don't even have to hit rock bottom to reach a point where they're like, okay, I need to like make some changes. I want my life to shift into a different direction because this is not how I want to live anymore. Like. And it got to that point, thankfully I was starting to go to counseling regularly. And um, yeah, I don't wanna go too much into all that because I think I'm gonna make a whole nother video. So let me know in the comments if you would like to hear kind of more my story and journey with mental health especially and kind of how that all brought me into more of like a healing, learning to love myself growth journey. Um, so yeah, let me know if you wanna see that, but skipping ahead to when I started um, my healing process, really taking a look inside of myself and getting to know the true me, what my authentic self is, what my truth is. And so I'm gonna share the kind of main six things that helped me get there and that I still use a lot of the time when I find 
I'm feeling a little bit lost again or I'm maybe struggling with my thoughts. Sorry, I have my laptop here because I'm making notes, but a lot of us have kind of that like victim mentality where it's like, oh, why is this happening to me? And oh, this always happens to me. We kind of start falling down those negative thought patterns again. We start kind of feeling more negative and ultimately it is up to us to create the life that we want to live. So if we're thinking negatively, then that's going to affect our actions. Our actions aren't going to be very positive either. Our emotions aren't going to be very positive. We're going to put out negativity and we're going to get it back. So it's just this like vicious cycle. And I was in it for majority of my life. But anyways, we're humans and we experience a wide variety of thoughts and feelings all the time. But I think it's just important to have some tools in our toolbox that we can always come back to that are gonna help ground us back into our truth and to ourselves and kind of reset back into living a fulfilled and happy, healthy life. So the first thing is just accepting. So I've talked about this in other videos, radical acceptance, that means you just accept what is, what is happening, what's happened, accepting your feelings, accepting different circumstances or situations, accepting our thoughts, even when they are, you know, not nice or bad. I don't know why I did that, but even when they're not nice, just recognizing them and accepting them like, okay, I'm having a lot of judgmental thoughts toward myself or towards others. I'm having a lot of negative thoughts. Stop resisting them and stop shoving them down. The more we keep just shoving, shoving, shoving and just trying to ignore or resist what's going on in our minds and in our bodies that's when we create our own pain and suffering that's when we become more negative and it just builds and builds and builds and it starts coming out in other areas of our life and until we can take a look at our thoughts at our minds at our feelings at our bodies until we can take a look at ourselves you're going to be unhappy you're not going to live the life that you want to live because we are the ones in control we design our life we design ourselves ultimately and the choices that we make and you know nobody's gonna magically come along and go inside of our minds and make us think differently and feel differently and make different choices it's up to us and i until i realized that when i was really at rock bottom and feeling like i wanted to die I, you know, I was like, okay, Kaylee, are you going to do it or are you going to live? Like you decide here. And if you're going to keep living, like you, you can't, I was like, I can't keep living this way. So nobody's magically can, can fix it for me. Nobody's, you know, I, I go to therapy. I tried medications, but like, ultimately it was on me. It's on us to change and to grow. We have to be the ones to do it. No one's going to make us do it. And letting go of what we can't control. As I was just ranting about, we can only control ourselves. That's what we have control over. We don't have control over circumstances happening outside of us. We don't have control of other people, how they react, how they think, how they perceive things. Ultimately, when you just surrender and release and let go, it is so freeing. And I know personally, I was holding on to a lot of like resentment towards my parents and, you know, towards all these situations or circumstances that happened to me that were, you know, challenging and hard at the time. And I was just holding on to all this stuff, all this energy, all this emotion, all these thoughts. And it was really affecting me in a negative way. And when I finally started just releasing it all <laughs> a lot of crying okay it's very intense emotionally intense but i felt so free and so light after and i just was like wow <laughs> i feel so fresh and new and it's just once you can do that and feel that way the other side of it is totally worth it and then you can carry on living life without letting the past 
drag you down. Once you kind of get a grasp on recognizing the things that you're holding on to and that are affecting you and your thought processes and you know your relationships maybe, just how you view the world, how you view life, once you kind of get a grasp on that, do some releasing, some letting go, you know, go to counseling or journal about it or like there's so many different things through like guided meditations you can do it or simply even just letting yourself feel it and accepting like i there is a lot of anger in my body right now and just watching it and feeling it and letting yourself cry letting yourself you know punch a pillow whatever you need to do to just help let it go and release once you just accept it and release it then the next kind of step is to ask yourself how can i be better from this what can I learn from this? You know, rather than just, oh, this sucks. Like, why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to me? Or, you know, just dwelling on it and complaining instead of being like, okay, yep, I'm accepting that this is happening. Yes, it's not ideal. Yes, it's challenging, but obviously I can become better from this. I can learn from this. When something challenging happens, you deal with it, you take action, and maybe reflect on it a bit after. Next time in a similar situation, what can I do differently so that I can be better, so that I don't feel so angry, so that I don't react this way? Being your own challenger and just saying like, okay, like this is on me, how can I learn, how can I grow? Because every challenge every situation is just an opportunity for learning and growth and when you don't think of it that way and like i said before when you just kind of like resist it and allow yourself to like be negative about it dwell on it and all of that like you're ultimately just causing yourself unhappiness and why would you want to do that like don't you want to be happy i know i was pretty sick of being negative being depressed being ang like anxious angry resentful I was so sick of all of that that I was like I'm open to like I'm ready I'm open I want to be a happy person I want to love myself I want to love life so it's you have the choice yeah kind of the third thing and I still do this a lot is as I was saying we all like all of us humans we're constantly thinking all the time like we are and we're just not um, conscious of it most of the time. And we just believe everything that we're thinking and believe that it's like us and our truth. But there is this false self and then there's our true authentic self. And that's what I really um, started to notice as I was healing and as I was working through this stuff. Ask yourself like, okay, are these really my thoughts or are these fearful thoughts are these my ego's thoughts are these thoughts coming from wounds from my past we have this false self that comes from our conditioning how we grew up our parents you know the environment we grew up in our friendships all of that and yeah just like even just society what we absorb what we watch what we read all affects our core beliefs and these are unconscious we're not usually aware of them and a lot of our thoughts come from that i think too many of us believe what we think and don't believe everything you think a lot of what you think is not true <laughs> there's a true self underneath and that's your that's your conscience that's your intuition that's the part of you that is still and peaceful. It's not chaotic and noisy in your mind and your thoughts. It's not full of anxiousness, depression, fear, sadness, anger. Like that is not your true self. That is all this false self, this conditioning, this ego that we need to start being aware of and accepting it and letting it go and not giving in and believing it. That's, you know, how we start unlearning what we've learned that don't doesn't serve us doesn't fit for us isn't our true self and um that kind of leads me into the fourth thing which is being open to unlearning <laughs> so yes being open to learning obviously learning new ways of thinking new ways of being learning you know about eating healthier learning about 
I don't know, things that help serve you that you genuinely enjoy and help you feel happy and your best self, but also being open to unlearning. Once you kind of start recognizing that false self that I was just talking about, be open to unlearning that stuff. Even the, that little judgment voice or the voice that comments about like body image or how people look, it's unlearning that. It takes a lot of self-awareness and I think one common theme I just want to say quickly and all of these things I'm sharing is self-awareness. You have to start being aware of yourself and taking a look inside. So the fifth thing, I've mentioned this in many other videos, but start talking to yourself in your head <laughs> and start talking back to those, those thoughts that pop up, that little voice in your head, whatever you want to call it. Have that inner child especially that really needs to be nurtured and I think so many of us um the way we've been raised in just our world nowadays we we don't nurture ourselves enough and just love and accept ourselves for who we are and you know yes there's always room to grow and get better but I think it's really important that we talk to ourselves in our mind the way we would want someone to talk to us you know our best friend or a parent it, you know it's not our parents fault but a lot of the times they're unable to meet all of our needs they're unable to fully see us fully validate us when we're kids when we're growing up and then that carries in through adulthood and we're always searching for validation from other people we're always searching searching outside of ourselves and I did that a lot when I first started really acknowledging a lot of the pain um, that I was holding on to, especially from childhood. I have this this inner child this and this ego, this, I keep saying it, but this false self that wants to be loved and nurtured and acknowledged and seen and heard. And when the true you can do that, you feel that love that you've always been searching for and it's within you. You're not looking for it outside of anyone else anymore. Being your own best friend, being your own parent has helped me feel so much more comfortable by being alone and our relationship with ourself is really the most important because, you know, we're born alone, we die alone, we are alone a lot of the time throughout our life and we're the ones like I was saying that get to decide what our life looks like and if we're going to lead the life of our dreams and be the people that we want to be we get to choose we get to decide so that's why it's so important to develop that healthy relationship with yourself then the last thing that I want to mention the sixth thing um, is to just find ways to reconnect with life. The ways that I like to do that are through my body. So grounding myself back into my body by breathing, acknowledging your breathing and just taking conscious breaths. Even if it's just like one good conscious breath where your whole awareness is just into your breathing, that is so good for helping reconnect you to your, not only your body, but to the true you and to source because that breath, where did that come from? It came from life, it came from life energy. So it, it automatically connects you, even if it's just for a couple of seconds. I think that's why people like exercising and moving their bodies so much is because it helps ground you back into your body and out of the, the noise and those thoughts that are constantly going on in your mind. Um, also just prayer and law of attraction manifesting consciously speaking affirmations or gratitude or visualization as well through other humans just connecting with other humans like we are right now <laughs> or through books through videos in person talking just connecting with each other and nature it all comes from the same thing we do it all it's all alive just like we are it all exists just like we exist so that's why we feel more peaceful when we spend time in nature is because we're more connected and when we're more connected with god with source whatever you want to call it we feel peaceful we feel more our true self and that's why we enjoy it so much but yeah these are six main things that i've 
started doing and I continue to do. I probably will always try to continue to do throughout my life because I find that they help me to be better and lead me to feel more content and happy in life. I'm going to do everything in my power within myself, what I can control to get there and to live the life of my dreams and be my best self. And I want that for you too. And I hope that you want that for yourself. We're all on our own paths, on our own, on our own journeys and you can't rush the process like healing is not a straight line and I don't think there's a there's never a finish line in evolution and growth and healing it's it's like this and ride in the wave of life <laughs> that's so cringy to say but it's true anyways I could talk about these topics for hours and hours and hours I did my best to summarize it but I know um, maybe Maybe it was a little bit confusing at some points. I hope I didn't lose you. I hope you're still here. If you are, thank you so, so much for clicking on today's video. I hope that you got something out of it that you're feeling empowered and connected more to your truth and your authentic self. And please feel free, as I said, to share anything down below. And I'm sending you so much love and I hope to see you in the next video.